Who said museums have to be boring? Chum! Why do I look like an old man? Today we stroll through the San Ambrosio market. No way. Those pears look delicious. As we make our way to the funky new kid on the Florentine block. <laughs> the Museum of Illusions. We're Matteo and Misha. We're currently traveling to all 20 regions of Italy on the ultimate Italian road trip. In our previous Florence mini-series episode, we ate our way through the city and found the best street foods Florence has to offer. Oh, that looks so good. <laughs> there you go. Oh, so loud. So this morning, we're starting out at the San Ambrosio Market. And right outside, they have a lot of tables with like flowers and different kind of knickknacks and books and things you can buy. So there's a lot of goodies inside. Do you want a Burberry jacket? I do need a good jacket, but I'm pretty sure I don't have any space left in my bag. I'm a one jacket kind of man. <laughs> Today you're a no jacket day. kind of man. Oh, that would look so fabulous on you. You're right. Yeah. Which one? The one that makes you look like me? I don't know. I think the white would oh, make you, you would one, make though. you pop a little bit more. Oh, what about this? You can actually look at that. I already have something like that. Do you want a purse? I don't need a purse today. Mm -hmm. I want to get a little leather backpack though, so I can fit right in. How sick would it be if we made a series filming on like one of these? It's five megapixel. It shoots in. Might not be full HD, but let's see. <laughs> See if we can find a video camera. That would be cool. Do they need a memory card? Do they? The memory cards still exist. Can we help me look for a video camera? Look at how crazy these are. This thing takes film. We still fit into that millennial zone. I don't know what a film is. Oh wait, what is this? <laughs> what? That's cool. That's so cool. <laughs> That's so cool. No way. See, but then you still have to buy the roll. You can see through it. You want to see? Like, can you actually see? You have to go close. Hey, how cool are these cars? Ooh, old photographs. Look at that money. If I knew anything about cameras, I'd probably know what I'm looking at. The San Ambrosio market is the other market in Florence after Mercado Centrale but you're less likely to stumble across this one as it is off the beaten path a bit. It is just cute here, a little open air, everything come find your little nicks and knacks, is that what you call them? Nick nicks, nick, nick, nicks and knacks or some fruit. There's also a market indoors. The guy who designed the Mercato Centrale also designed this market here, which you can't really see because there's all the stores and the roofs around it. But yeah, nice little morning activity. From what I understand, I think the market is open every day from 7 to 12. So it is just a morning market before everything clears out. I thought that was a legit one until I realized that it was wood. Is, that's not a real mushroom? No, it's wood. Oh, wait, yeah, but that's a mushroom. <laughs> You know what, that's actually a pretty accurate... Uh, quite, quite believable. That's so cool. The whole thing is wood. Oh, no, wait, the one's... That's crazy.
food. I'm hungry. I don't even get hungry this early. There's so much food. It's insane. It smells so good in here. And you've got pasta, you've got cheese, salami, fish. Oh my god. Those pears look delicious. If you watched our street food video, you'll know what that is. <laughs> I call to them. The market here is pretty big and it is it just, just feels a little bit more manageable than what Kako Chantan is. It does feel a bit more local too, which is nice. I mean you are really not short of options here either. Every window you walk past, it, it's just full of the most insanely delicious looking stuff. We're so hungry right now, I actually don't know what to do. <laughs> A part of me wants like a roast chicken, but I know it's breakfast because the chicken and the meat look good. The salami looks good, but I don't think you can have that for breakfast. No, but we're going to pull a rookie move. I bet you we're going to go and eat all the sweets in the city again, feel ill, and then say we should learn our lesson <laughs> until the next time we do it again. Yeah, old habits die hard. I'm guessing that's a black truffle. Just a single one. Just a single one. Questa è una cosa con riso. Sì, budino di riso. Bot bottino di riso. Budino. Budino. Ok, questa. Uno. Buongiorno. Vado a assaggiare? Eh? A posto? Sì. Grazie. 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 Grazie mille. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> to start. We've gotten a little snack to start the day. We got budino de riso. And I'm not totally sure what's in this little slice of heaven, but back in the day when Matteo and I used to live in Florence, he used to pick these up for me from the secret bakery on his way back home from bartending because he'd come back at like two or three in the morning and that's when the secret bakeries were open and they'd be making them fresh. So then I'd wake up to these little things waiting in the kitchen and they just, they're just so delicious and they make me really happy because it reminds me of our youth. So mm. That's honestly even better than I remember. The outside dough is very like crunchy, but it's because it's holding in the deliciously moist inside. It's like a rice pudding inside. It almost tastes like a custard as well, almost like a rice custard. It is like the perfect amount of crunchiness on the outside and moist deliciousness on the inside. And the powdered sugar on top is also a very nice touch. So wait, your hands are already dirty. Feed me. <laughs> this is why I hate eating in public. Oh, that's good. Right? Mm. It's like seriously even better than I remember it being. Mm. It's like custody again. Mm. Oh, that's delicious. Wow. I'm still hungry because, believe it or not, that, that tiny little rice cake didn't actually cut it. So, <laughs> I think we need to get some real breakfast. Ooh, do you want to go to, do you want to go to Leonardo and get some cantuccini? This place called Leonardo, it's got a bunch of sweets, so we literally just popped our heads in there to see what they had. And, and then she's like, oh, do you want something? We're like, oh, no, we're just looking. And then she's like, okay, real quick. And we got like two, two free treats. This is like a, a pistachio little cluster. And she gave Matteo, yeah, little. Chocolate cantuccini. Chocolate cantuccini. Typical biscuits of Tuscany. Yeah, that was very sweet of her. We were literally just popping our heads in to look at the, the window. I did eat my other half there. Comes with like another symmetrical side. <laughs> Try the that was really nice of her. Mm. Mm. In case anybody's forgot, I love everything to do with pistachio. I mean, it's been a long time coming since I've mentioned the word pistachio or pistachio. But here we are, back at it. I miss my Sicilian roots of my little pistachio nut. I don't know how. I don't know how I can keep describing pistachio baked goods, but maybe I start doing facial expressions or thumbs ups or something. Bloody delicious. The thing with Florence is that if you keep your eyes on the ground, you're going to miss a whole bunch of stuff above you. 
but if you keep your eyes above you, you're gonna step in dog crap. <laughs> but Florence does have a little bit of gems up on the walls, such as the little plaque up here behind me. It's all over the city. It's a little plaque that actually shows you the water level of the massive flood that happened in 1966. You can find them all throughout the city and it's insane because if I point it to you there right now, that little white line at the top, that is how high the water was when the flood happened. All these buildings were underwater. It destroyed a lot of the city and a lot of artwork and a lot of important things that were in the city. But yeah, that plaque is all throughout the city. You'll find them, keep your eyes up. Maybe I recommend when you're walking, stop and actually look above you because the other little gems such as the little like Mother Mary there and that little box, you'll see those throughout the city as well. Just little beautiful things that you find throughout the city. For all our study abroad kids out there, there is a secret bakery down this street. But because it's a secret bakery, I won't tell you where it is or what the name of the street is. I've got to block the name. But here's your hint. <laughs> the piazza we are in now, which is Piazza Santa Croce. And if you look on the wall below the 1966 flood line here, there's another one that says 1557. So there were two major floods that covered the city at different times. We got burritos for lunch, we got a chile con carne burrito, and we got a chicken fajita burrito. We've never been to this place before. It's called Ebby's. Normally we go to Los Chicos, which is just down the street when we want burritos, but we thought we'd give this place a try today. I really hope it tastes as good as it smells. Mm. Married to a Californian who makes me eat Mexican food. And you know, fun part about Mexican food is that we're in California and I said, I've never really eaten Mexican food. They were all really shocked. If you ever look at a map, look where South Africa is and look where Mexico is. You tell me why we don't get that food. <laughs> but do you uh, enjoy it? Oh, it's good. It's bloody good. I opened you up to a whole new world here, bud. You did. We decided our next activity for the day is something unique and something we've been wanting to check out. And it may not be what it appears to be. Dun dun dun. Okay. It's time to go in. What are we, what are we doing? No. You most definitely can't get that. You have to look forward. Mish, you're not going to win at that. It doesn't work. Go ahead to center yourself. Stay right there. Okay, Mish, your eyes need to be on this one. Yeah, this mirror here, okay? <laughs> yeah. Hi, how are you doing? Which is your real head? This one. Can you see cool?
what happened to all the color. Welcome to Matera's masterclass. Here I am going to draw a portrait of Michelle. But I have to do it fast, it makes everything green. So here we go. First of all, start off with a little bit of light. Okay, you ready? I need to move this thing out the way. Okay. That's like your forehead. Go, go, go. Why do I look like a jar? Well, because I thought your forehead. Oh, damn it. Oh no. That's the, the curly hair. This is what you think I look like. This is the saddest self portrait I've ever seen. Wait, it's fading. I look terrible. <laughs> Why do I look like an old man? Oh, oh no. Yeah, all right. I mean, that's kind of what I look like after a night of drinking. <laughs> Is that, is that my camera and That's tripod? Stick, yeah. <laughs> Looks like a sword. No, the other hand can have... A gelato in it. This is really taking a turn. What is that? It's a sword. You said you wanted a sword. I might draw you a balloon animal. An elephant. This is fun. See, so, you know, this is what Michelangelo would look if he was really bad at art. In case you, you couldn't tell, I wouldn't sign up for Mateo's last art class. So, what we've learned here today is that I'm not very talented when it comes to the arts. I shall just leave my torch here. Hang my head in shame. I mean, that was a travesty. That was so cool. Was awesome. Like, we tried to capture a little bit of it, but it's just it's definitely something, if you're here, it's definitely worth seeing in person. We couldn't even properly capture it on video, and we wouldn't want to anyway. Like, it, we don't want to, like, spoil the fun of what's inside. But you can't even really record most of that stuff because you just have to be there to actually see it. Yeah, and normally in museums, like, I walk around and, like, try and look at stuff in detail for, like, the first 30 minutes, and then I just kind of start like breezing through everything but inside this place we were looking at literally every single thing like we didn't even want to miss a single thing that they had so it's definitely a fun way to spend an afternoon so we have one suit we wanted to stop at this place because we've had our eye on this iced lavender latte and this iced coffee masseu latte and we walk past this place all the time and I just I really want to try them because they sound very interesting so sometimes an espresso just doesn't cut it you know so defend my heritage <laughs> hey <laughs> Oh, thank you. Is this like the little lady finger? Yes. Yeah. Ready? That's a lady finger. I don't really do fancy coffees. I'm just happy with my espresso. 
but when something says coffee masu and ask lavender, I mean, I was gonna say I have to try it, I really don't have to, but why not? <laughs> This is it's like a very tiramisu iced coffee. Do you like it? I do like it. Nice to try these things. Michelle's the iced coffee person, not me. I it do. does taste good. I do love iced coffee. If you like coffee things. The lavender honey is really good. Once you scoop it up from the bottom, I like honey. I like honey a lot. If you put the honey and pistachio together, you've got me one. But yeah, Ooh. once you get that, that honey. The lavender honey is delicious. I love flavored honeys.